Today I restore a set of Alison 6 loudspeakers. So some time ago I came into possession of a set of Alison 6 loudspeakers. I love the design of this square cabinet and the quirky way that the drivers are placed. And I got them for free, but there was a catch. They did not work. Or more precisely, they needed new surroundings before they could be played again. Now I'm not very comfortable with doing these kind of reparations, so I thought, well, let's see if I can become more comfortable and replace these surroundings myself. And this is how it went. So the first thing I had to do was take out the drivers, clean them up, because these things were absolutely filthy. So after removing the surrounds, I could take out the driver and start cleaning. The first job was to clean the part where the new surrounds will be glued onto the metal. This was probably the most time consuming part of the whole operation. They need to be spotless and this goo did not want to go. The paper cones also have this same sticky stuff on them and throughout the years a lot of dust had settled on the cones so I decided to try and give it a good dusting. So that went pretty well and now it was time to clean up the paper driver because the new surrounds also need a clean surface when they are glued in. This was the scary part for me because I did not want the razor blade to cut into the paper cone. And here is the end result. A clean metal rim and a clean paper cone and now we can start gluing in the surrounds. I placed some paper towels beneath the paper driver. And yes, I know I have been using the words cone and driver, but I will stick to driver from now on. So I placed some paper towels beneath the driver to give me a more stable surface to work with when I apply the glue. Because a driver is of course designed to move. Here you can see the two flat rings that need to be glued onto the loudspeaker. The inside rim goes onto the paper driver and the outside rim goes onto the metal basket. I start with the inside rim. Now the most important thing is to get the new surround glued in place while making sure that the driver stays perfectly centered. I chose to start with gluing the surround to the driver first. Centering is not an issue yet. That will come when we do the outer rim.
After gluing in the inner rim I placed the driver upside down to apply some pressure to the glue. I gave it some time to dry and then it was on to the next step where I had to permanently glue the surround into place while making sure to keep it perfectly centered. I took some clothespins to help me to do that. I placed them all around making sure everything was centered and you can check this by pushing onto the center of the driver and listening for a rubbing sound. As long as it does not rub you should be okay. After making sure it was perfectly centered, I removed half of the pins and glued in the first half of the surround. Okay, I'm sure you get the idea now how all this went for both drivers. I also gave the tweeter a good cleaning. This is an interesting design. It looks like it has been put in backwards. And as you can see, the connections for the wires are actually on the outside of the cabinet instead of the inside. Okay, time to put the repaired drivers back in.
And that's it. Job well done. Now before I show you the end result, let me tell you something about this little loudspeaker. The Alison 6 is a 4 ohm loudspeaker with an 8 inch up firing woofer that gives over to the 1 inch dome tweeter at 2000 Hz. It is designed to be placed against the wall and the woofer can be facing upwards or to the sides. And 15 to 60 watts of power is enough to drive them and they weigh in at some 8 kilos each. Beautiful. Everything is connected. Here is some footage that I shot the day that they were finished, so you can hear my first impressions. But this Twitter design really gives it a very, very spacious sound. And bass is also pretty much okay when they are placed close enough to the rear wall. But the Twitter is interesting in that it gives you a very spacious sound. It almost feels a little bit like it adds a little bit of extra echo but what happens with music that has been recorded with a lot of air around the uh, instruments and the singers and stuff like that it will i guess accentuate that a little bit but it gives you a very very spacious feeling from this set of loudspeakers that's why things like ambient music is very well suited for these things. Now I've not been doing a placement, um, you know, is there a 3D sound stage? I've listened a little bit. I think that is not the strength of this thing. But the interesting thing of this loudspeaker is that even if you are far away back, all the way in the kitchen or wherever I wanna go, it feels like the music is very spacious. It feels like if you would sit in front of it, it will give you a very good 3D sound. Anywhere in the room, somehow, everywhere in the room, this sounds like a very relaxed and spacious loudspeaker. And here we are. So I'm going to just play you some music from the YouTube library not interesting as far as music is concerned, but it will give you an idea of what the Alessons can do. So here we go. Okay, if you are still watching this video, I appreciate it very much, but unfortunately there is not a happy ending to this story, because in the end the glue did not hold. I filmed this many months ago and because I was editing this video I thought well let's get them out and play them, maybe even make a good recording with my new recorder, but it was not to be. The part that was glued to the metal basket is still in perfect order, but the glue on the paper driver came loose. So I have to redo it or get myself some fresh 8 inch drivers, but at the moment I can't play them. However. I did learn a lot from this experience and they did work for a while, so that is the memory that I'm going to keep. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.